Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research and it is Wednesday morning and I'm doing a video today. Uh, last night I was up pretty late and I was working on the flywheel generator. So yeah, um, it went very well. Um, I got it complete. Um, this is a prototype one. Now, uh, just by doing my uh, preliminary tests, uh, I found out some interesting facts about this uh, flywheel generator. Um, it does work, um, but certain parameters have to be in place before you get over unity. So obviously this model will not be over unity. Um, I might toy around with some different motor generators, but this one here doesn't seem to be the, the choice that I'll probably have to go with. I have another motor in mind that might actually be a better motor generator. Um, yeah, so... Last night, I worked uh, pretty late on it, and I hooked up the circuit. And, oh, uh, before anything, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, bottom right-hand corner. And also, uh, all the links are in the Patreon there, in my description for my Patreon, my Bitcoin. If you like what I'm doing, please uh, donate, and uh, you'll get some perks there. And I'm working on trying to get some sponsorships right now. Um, working on ideas how to do that and yeah I got a lot of stuff going on that's why I haven't really made many videos in the last week um, but anyways um, I decided to tackle this flywheel generator last night kind of spur of the moment so um, all the testing I've been doing is uh, using this uh, um, third I, I charge it up to about 14 volts and it's a 500 ferret capacitor bank and you can get them on uh, Amazon so what I did is I hooked up the circuit. So instead of using the TIP-127 uh, uh, transistor, I'm actually using the auto relay. Now, that might also be a reason why it's not working to the way I want it. But this is all part of my testing. So I might have to actually get a TIP-127 MOSFET. I do have another MOSFET that I could use. I might even try that. Um, yeah, so... Basically, uh, the, the way the circuit works is the, the motor works as a motor and a generator, okay? So, just to look at the flywheel here, obviously, I'm only using a, an 8-inch flywheel. Now, from the test that I've seen and the performance that I'm getting, I would have to go to a dramatically larger diameter wheel. This is 8-inch. I would have to go to either a 20, 24-inch, 2-foot diameter wheel to get better results because the flywheel generator, it's getting its over unity from the kinetic uh, inertia of the wheel. So even though that this thing's about three and a half, four pounds, it does work, but you have to go way faster speeds. And yeah, uh, you just have to go, the smaller the wheel, you have to go higher velocity. The larger the wheel, the less velocity, but you can add a little, it will naturally have obviously more mass. So uh, 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 a mass in motion tends to stay in motion. That's where you get your kinetic energy. That, that's why they call it a mechanical battery. All right. This is just a prototype. This is just to kind of see how the circuit works, how it performs, um, where I have to make improvements to make this thing an awesome machine. And I think the flywheel generator has huge, huge potential. And I actually heard um, Tom Vallone actually speaking about the flywheel generator system. And he says it's probably one of the best over unity systems out there right now that has the highest potential. So I think we should really take a second look at a flywheel generator system. So uh, I got two magnets, one 180 degrees apart. All right, um, actually, I'm going to shut this off because I still have some power in the... Okay, so for every 180 degrees, it's going to trip the switch. Okay, you hear it? Okay, that's tripping the auto relay. So every 180 degrees, it gives the motor a push. All right? And the, in the meantime, within that 180 degrees, it's charging. So every time it hits the magnet... It becomes a motor and pushes the motor forward. When it's off, it's charging. All right, it's charging. Motor. 
charging, 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 motor. All right? So it has intervals. And the original plans that I found on the internet, it only calls for one magnet. So basically, it's one pulse for 360 degrees. All right? Now, they're using two-foot diameter wheels. Okay? I have eight inches. So for my test, I decided to put you know, two magnets 180 degrees apart. That will give me a little bit more push because I'm not creating enough kinetic energy in that wheel to sustain itself. So it's pretty self-evident after my testing that that's exactly it. So the bigger the wheel, the better the wheel. All right? Not so much the speed. It's, it's the diameter times the mass. So there's actually calculators out there that you can actually find out the actual uh, uh, kinetic force in joules. And um, there is a calculator out there. Uh, you can search online for it. So obviously this thing, you know, is not going to be over unity. Okay. But it does have some pretty interesting results. So I charged this thing up to 14. Yeah, about 14 volts. And then I cut the power supply off it and I let it go. My very first run, this thing sustained a run for 10 minutes. A four-pound wheel, a big honking-ass motor generator, and I sustained a 10-minute run. Now, that in itself is pretty amazing because even though it's 500 ferret, that's at 16 volts. So I had 14 volts in it. That means I had maybe about 350 ferrets in it. And it ran for 10 freaking minutes. So that in its own is quite amazing. So obviously there is huge potential for this. I mean, really big. And I do believe those guys were getting 300% over unity ratings. But you got to have a big diameter wheel. This is only 8 inches. I got to go to 24 inches. All right. This thing is about three and a half pounds. The wheel, I would need about five to eight pounds. And that creates a lot of kinetic energy and inertia. And, uh, or not so much inertia, more kinetic energy stored in that wheel. That's why they call it a mechanical battery. And obviously the rig is going to have to be a lot better. It's going to spin a lot more true. There's got to be a lot less mechanical losses in the system. That, contribute, that contributes to its inefficiency, right? So, but this is just kind of proof of concept model. I knew this wouldn't be the, you know, the end game by far, okay? You know, I can build, I, I literally slapped this thing together with, with junk, right? But when I go to prototype two, it's going to be quite a bit different, it is going to be way, way, way better. So, I'd like to demonstrate it for you. Um, also, questions, comments, bottom co um, in the comments section, please leave your comments. I do correspond with a lot of people. So, if I don't get back to you within a couple hours, don't fear. I'll probably get back to you within the next day. I'm just overrun by, you know, constant, you know, correspondence all the time so yeah um yeah really really cool build i really enjoyed making this um yeah uh like i said i took scraps i had stuff from my old end machine i had uh old prototype parts they had the bearing fittings in there so this thing's actually running on bearings seated bearings so yeah like you, you know if you got junk around hey use it because you can make stuff with it, you know? There's a lot of stuff you can do. So um, I tried it, you know, vertically. I tried it horizontally. It seems to perform vertically better. I don't know why. It just runs a lot smoother. It could be because of the, uh, the way the bearings are. So, yeah, I'm going to fire this up. And I'm going to let you see how it runs. That's a little bit noisy. It's not that bad, but... Uh, we'll, we'll give it a shot. I also have a kill switch at the back here, which actually I should flip it around, but it's been running pretty good. So, all right. So I'm going to get it fired up. I'm going to get the uh, power supply going here. All right. So it's already started up. 
So it's charging the capacitor. It's drawing a lot of amps because I got it set kind of high. Let's go a bit lower so it's not killing it. Let it charge up the capacitor. And you hear the clicking. Every 180 degrees it clicks, that becomes a motor. And when it's off, it's a generator, so it's charging the capacitor bank. So this thing draws quite a bit of power when you're charging up the super cap, plus running a load. So that's why it's so high. All right, so we're going to bump it up a little higher. I want to get it up to about, you know, it'll go about 13 or 14 volts. Now it's spinning a lot faster. Like I said, this is just a prototype, man. Like, I'm learning a lot from this prototype real fast. So the bigger the wheel, the better. This thing's only eight inches. I gotta go to 24 inches. And I like to use a super cap because I can really see the performance. Okay, I'll bump it a little higher. Let's go to 13 volts. Let those amps go down when they go down to under about an amp and a half. And then after I got it charged, I'm going to shut the power supply right off and just run off the cap bank. And it's not true as well. You know, there's a lot of mechanical imperfections. Obviously, that's true. So that's going to contribute to losses. But I am learning a lot from this, so... The next one's going to be quite a bit better. <laughs> but it does work. <laughs> it works. You know, this little cap bank can run this for 10 minutes. That's pretty good. When it's only got 350 farad in it. Yeah. All right, let's bump it up. Let's go 14. Okay. We got it at 14 and a half. This thing could go to 16 and a half volts. This motor can handle 24 volts. Actually, no, 48, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, 48. It's either 24 or 48. All this stuff you can buy on Amazon. All right, so we're at 14, four. Amps are starting to drop down. That means it's almost charged. Just let it go. That's the uh, uh, magnetic read switch. That's controlling the uh, switch here to turn on and off. Okay, so we're good. We're at 14.4, and we are going to shut it off. All right, now it's just running on capacitors now. Kind of take a walk around so you can see what's going on. That tinging noise, da, 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 that's actually the uh, relay switch, so that's why I might have to go to a MOSFET. But I wanted to try this switch, and it does work. And this is running off the cap bank right now. It's got nothing attached to it. So it's running the wheel and charging the cap bank at the same time. But obviously this wheel's gonna be a way bigger to get the efficiencies that I need. And obviously the whole rig itself is gonna be way better. This is just a kind of proof of concept to see how it's performing and what it actually does. But very cool build. I like I like building this. This was a fun build. I have another motor that is a 30 watt, and I think that was built more for a generator, but it is a motor. It's a lot smaller than this one, and I think I might be able to swap this out and put that one instead, and I'll try it again. I might get better efficiency it's a 30 watt so i figure while well, i use 30 watts to run it it should be able to produce 30 watts so 
yeah. Well, we could maybe try that motor out just for kicks. And it's still going. It's running on this. I don't know if you guys are timing it, but the last time that I did it, it ran for 10 minutes on its own. And she keeps going and going. Now, the whole thing is, if it can sustain itself, you would use actually a lead-acid car battery. It has a lot more capacitance. So if you're able to tap off the car battery, run an inverter, and this thing runs and sustains the battery, that's the whole, that's the purposes of this machine apparatus. So, yeah, starting to slow down a bit now, but if she's still going. We could run it right to the very end. Take my word for it, it was 10 minutes it ran at 14 volts starting voltage. So if it didn't have that circuit, this thing would have ran out of power a lot faster, a lot faster. It probably would have only lasted about five minutes. Yeah, respectively about five minutes. And I'm getting 10 minutes plus. So it's doubled the actual efficiency of, of the system. So obviously the wheel has got to be way, way bigger, way bigger. And in the plans, instead of having two magnets, 180 degrees apart, it would just have one magnet. So for every 360 degrees, it gives it a push. And then the rest of that spin is all charging. It's still going. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very cool build. I liked it. Even though that it's not, you know, the end product, obviously. A lot of improvements to go on this thing. But, yeah. You know, at least I'm learning something out of this. This is the other part of the system that I can use to actually run something sustain sustain a couple hundred watts or more so she's still running this thing actually could run quite a bit longer but uh, this switch needs minimum six and a half volts to run so as soon as it goes to six and a half volts the switch just cuts out because it doesn't have the power but um, yeah, you can see how long it's running. It's still going. Yeah, it's slowed down quite a bit. But even the way it is, if you have a battery and, you know, you, you basically shock the system, you know, every five minutes, you're, you're taking very little power out of the battery bank to sustain this run. And if you're running something to run another system that puts out that extra power, then yeah, you're, you've got an over unity system. It's always trying to stay ahead. So if you can run a system on cap banks and then charge it with a stack of batteries for, you know, take three minutes, a fast charge, boom. And then the batteries can get replenished by another system or, or this system together and have it run on the capacitor bank. So while one stack is running the system, the other stack is getting charged. And then you just flip them. It's the easiest thing in the world. Like you do that with a pulse motor and the pulse motor will run forever. So and while you're charging one stack, you flip the other stack. Flip back and forth, back and forth, and that's it. You have an over unity system, it runs forever. So we're almost at 20 minutes here. This is a big, long video. I haven't done a video this long in a while. But anyways, uh, yeah, we're at 20 minutes here. It'll take forever to upload. So you know what? I'm going to stop the video now. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like what you've seen. And uh, comments, questions in the bottom. I got my Patreon links in the description. And also check out Crypto Alchemist. Uh, I might even be going on Bernie's show tonight. So uh, check out Crypto Alchemist for... Uh, our show time. Um, yeah. So everybody have a great day. Cheers. And we'll see everybody soon.